Welcome back to the studio. Me and Jameson, every single Wednesday, are going to be ripping off a little trade target video. Some buys, some sells. I, I got a, a dynasty trade offer that we're going to throw on the end of the episode, and we'll we'll talk through it. But these videos are going to be more for redraft, more for season long, more for the peasants out there that fucked up their draft, and now they need to reconvene and climb the ladder to get back into the motion of right things. Here, right now. You want to you want to rip first? Uh, I mean, one of the, one of the buys. First are- off, t- tuck it in. <laughs> So this the first buy I have isn't even like a guy. I think it's just all elite quarterbacks just fell on their face this weekend. As in, Mahomes did okay, Herbert did okay. They both top ten, but I'm talking about like Hertz put up 12 points. Lamar was outside the top 20. Joe Burrow, Josh Allen. I don't have like a specific buy that guy. It's almost like just if anyone in your league is just kind of already tired of them or scared or panicking, take advantage of that. I, I feel like those types of... That's if you're in, like, a noob league. Yeah, I almost feel like I don't want to waste time talking about, yeah, like, okay. easy ones. Like, people are like, oh, go get Jamar Chase. He had 30, like, everyone fucking knows Jamar Chase is Jamar Chase. You know what I mean? So, like, we're not helping people. If someone's in, like, a noob league, that they're I don't think they're the people that we're actually speaking to. You know what I mean? I, I think the best types of buys that you can make in the beginning of the year are guys that you liked in the summer, and then they underperformed like statistically in week one, but you saw enough of the guy that you're like, okay, th- I feel good about his participation in, in the um, in the offense. I feel good about like what I saw in week one. Those I feel like are the best types of players to try to go after. So first guy I was thinking of was Elijah Moore, where I think people were on the fence about Elijah Moore all summer, right? And then the first weekend happened and Elijah Moore had like 40, 45 yards or whatever, right? So yeah. realistically, I mean, he put up like seven fantasy points for you. But when I look like a little bit deeper, he was a dude who, in terms of like participation, right? Before the starters, like they, they won 24 to three. So they didn't really need him towards the end of the game. They rested the starter for, for the rest of the game. He had a 27% target share before, um, before the team rested the starters. He had big air yard share led the team in targets with Mark Cooper with seven of them. He was used in the rushing. And that was something we saw like in the, in the preseason, right? Where we're like, okay, I usually don't like hang my head on that, but it feels like they're definitely going to be using him in that capacity. Um, the game was like wet, like no one was throwing the ball. He led the entire team, the entire league, not the entire league. He led the entire um, matchup in yards. There are a lot of good wide receivers on that field. He, he only had 43 yards, but he was like number one in the offense there. So everything I think about in terms of snap percentage, like, the routes run, the participation, and just production based on, like, the shitty weather. I think Watson's going to continue to get better when the weather's better. Elijah Moore is a dude who I feel like is probably on the fringe where I still feel confident he's going to finish the year as a top 24 wide receiver. Yeah, I think all summer we've been trying to compare him to not the perfect plug-in of Will Fuller, but just that speedy gadget guy, Brandon Cooks, Will Fuller, Kenny Stills, whatever comp you want, I think. Yeah, he he also had a a 38% third and fourth down target share. So, like, when he felt like he needed a quick hitter, when Watson felt like he needed to find someone that he trusted, probably over the middle, I think he's a slot guy, which is great because I think that's the guy he's going to hit quickly. That's the guy who separates and gets open quickly. And I I think, like, PPR-wise, he's going to be kind of studly in in good matchups. No, I I definitely agree. Uh, This kind of might be an obvious buy also, but I really think Jalen Waddell, like, I'm willing to pay whatever price. Like, I know he's an obvious one, but I truly think him and Tyreek are going to take turns. Like, Jalen Waddell had, I think it was four receptions, 78 yards. He had the same exact yards per catch as Tyreek. They both averaged, like, 19.8. Might be 19.5, one of the two. I think they're going to take turns. Tyreek is obviously going to take turns more. Could be So you're in. You're all in on Tua. Well, the next sell, but... Stop. (laughs) No, but Jalen Waddle, he produced as much as Tyreek. He just didn't get as much work. He had five targets, and believe it or not, Durham Smythe had seven targets. He had the most, Go. second most targets on the team. I have like seven best ball teams for some reason with Durham Smythe on them. Yeah, I, I like actually drafted him a few <laughs> times throughout the summer, and I feel like everyone's gonna eat in that offense, man. Everyone's gonna idea. have their day. We, I mean, we should have known like Tyreek Hill and Waddle are gonna have such a large target share, but someone's got to get the third most. But also Waddle, he didn't even get in the end zone. I think this is the last time he's gonna be relatively cheap. But again, I know he's an elite player. No one's gonna sell him for cheap to begin with. But I just think eventually he's gonna have his 150 yard day. He didn't even get in the end zone. This is gonna be the lowest scoring he's been. What did he put up like 10 points this week in half PPR leagues? I think this is the cheapest you're gonna get him, and I I would pay a hefty price. Is there anyone that you were drafting in the first round after the first week that you would give up for Waddle now? Because I think of like okay, the second half. I think the obvious answer would be Garrett Wilson. Okay, but that's a little 
obvious. You um, give up Wilson for Waddle straight up? I think this especially. Knowing that Rodgers yeah, is obviously out. Yeah, but again, that might be obvious. I what think about A.J. Brown? I was just going to say the two borderline guys are A.J. Brown and Devontae Adams. I think I would pretty heftily. I, I want to see Philly after Thursday night football. Because I do have uh, It's AJ definitely Brown. too, I think it's too early to just be like, oh, one week, he kind of had a subpar week. Let me like shift everything over. Yeah. So I don't think I'd move anything AJ necessarily still, there. I think he had, what, what was a seven reception, 70 yards? Yeah. I mean, him and Devontae, I think both still had seven targets. Both They both ended up okay doing like fine for fantasy. Um, and I think the game overall, which is again, wet, like Hurts yeah. and Philly wasn't really but throwing the ball. If you can negotiate well and you can make it seem like you have the leverage and you get AJ Brown plus Waddle and a throw in just because you might be a good negotiator, just things play your way and they're low on Waddle, they're panicking, I, I would pay the first round wide receiver price. Would you trade, I'm thinking of who, who are the first round running backs or who are the guys that went off before? Because obviously, obviously you're not flipping them for C-Mac. Who are the other running backs in the first round? Eckler is not getting moved. Hey, Bijan Robinson. Looking at Poor his participation with, with Jerome Ford having a uh, Jerome Ford, I think was all garbage time. Like I'm not really Fair. looking too much into that. Chubb's definitely locked in for me. Bijan for me, I'm definitely not moving Bijan if I have him for Jalen Waddle. But I do think some people might look at that based on the fact that Tyler Algier scored those two touchdowns. I think that's. I mean, Bijan's just going to get his regardless because he's someone who plays so much in that offense and plays like the important stuff. Six targets on like 18. He, he like literally had a 35 percent target yeah, share. You, you, you killed it, and what he did is just we didn't expect. Tyler to do as much as he was going to do. It's, it, it's We're not taking anything away from Bijan. I think it's more so we're adding to Algier. I'm impressed by him. Yeah, it, it was kind of tough to buy. Again, like we don't want to overreact, so there's not a ton of guys I, uh, I drafted that I felt good. About. Anyone you drafted in the first like eight, 10 rounds, you you feel good about them. So yeah. it's not like one week is going to make me not want a player anymore. I didn't draft any DeAndre Hopkins, but he would be a dude that I'm trying to offload now. He had 13 targets, which is an insane number of targets. He still ended up having like 10 half PR fantasy points. I think this is what we're going to expect from Tennessee and, and D-Hop. He caught seven balls. He had like 65 yards or something like that, which I, th I think he landed in perfectly at like 10 half PPR fantasy points. The problem I have with this is like, they're not going to be a team that throws for more than like a touchdown a game. So he's got to have those. And I look at this, like Tannehill threw 34 times in this game. Between Derrick Henry and Tajay Spears, they ran the ball 18 times. 34 Tannehill, 18 Derrick Henry and Tajay Spears. That That's not going to be their normal. Like no. going forward... They're going to meet somewhere in between. Like maybe Tannehill drops from 34 down to like 27. Derrick Henry and Tyler Spears go from 18 to 25 or something like that. 24, 25. You look at the last five years, going back to 2018, they were, they threw the ball at a clip of 52% or lower every single year, which is bottom five in the NFL, which has been bottom five, 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22, right? Like one game, we're not going to flip things here. So what I think is going to ebb and flow with DeAndre Hopkins' volume, he's not a downfield explosive playmaker anymore. This was something I feel like we kind of knew going into the year. He's not what A.J. Brown was in Tennessee. He's a possession guy where, like, I think he'll get, like, eight, nine targets a game, but most of them are just going to be kind of like, you know, third third down, eight-yard kind of reception. So I, if if Tannehill goes down from, like, 34 pass attempts down to 27, D-Hop's targets probably go from 13 down to, like, nine. And now you're talking about six catches for, like, 55 yards, maybe scores a touchdown. I just, th there's nothing sustainable about him getting 13 targets a game with Ryan Tannehill throwing the ball about 35 times a game because he's not he's not throwing the ball 35 times a game going forward so I'm trying to get rid of him kind of ASAP I would agree and a big point here is it was a run game and I also think like they barely use Burks or Chiggy like and yeah. I mean barely like that's Burks three targets Chiggy two like that's, yeah, that's not gonna, gonna see happen positive regression for them which will regress D hop negatively so I, I would definitely be on board with that one I don't, I don't really know if you consider this a sell because I feel like this guy's not even rostered that much Jacoby Myers um finishes a wide receiver three like yeah I just like I don't, he doesn't I don't feel like anyone's going to buy. A bench player. Okay. You don't like Jacoby? I kind of feel like he's going to be decent for the rest of the season. That's the thing. I think he'll be good, but he's not going to be sustainable of what he did. All right, but no one's expecting him to do the wide receiver three. Like, who who would it? Who are you going to trade him for? Elijah Moore. Okay. I, I think that might be, like, a decent compromise there. Yeah. Like, I would take Elijah Moore there for sure. But honestly, I think Jacoby might be okay. Because no. I, th I think, like, that maybe combined between him and Adams are going to be, like, 60% of the targets there. Yeah, I didn't want to throw him out there as, like, a serious. Just I kind of want to get your thoughts on live. Tr trading for Jalen Hurts, maybe. <laughs> yeah, get Jalen Waddle for <laughs> yeah. Jacoby Myers. Uh, a buy. I, I figured you were going to bring him up eventually. I just figured one of us will. I want to go back to Thursday Night Football. Jameer Gibbs. Like, this, the tweet you had were six mixed tackles, seven carries, or whatever it was. 42nd most carries in the league I know for people who start them it's like that's not the performance you want to statistically but this is one of those things where you have to just trust what you're seeing on the actual live footage rather than what the box score says because it's just a matter of time before he ramps up and when I say matter of time I'm going to be the right word it's due in time he'll ramp up it could be in week eight like it could be the first half of the season until he starts pu putting up over 
15, 16, 17 points a game, but I do think his time is coming. Yeah, he looked fucking incredible. And we even saw where he slipped up and he missed that touchdown. If he scores, we're not even having that conversation at this point. Yeah, I, th I think that goes back and forth. I, I feel like Montgomery's cleat fell off the play before. That's why they took him out for that goal line yeah. play to begin with. So it's like, you know, chicken or the egg kind of thing. Fair. Regardless, though, like Gibbs made, he made everybody else look just... So just good. slow motion, like high school running backs, man. He's yeah. on the field. Like you realize why they got rid of Swift and took Jameer Gibbs. He, <laughs> he, he adds like so another, good. that offense is actually going to be nuts when they get Jamison Williams back. Think about Jamison Williams, Amon Ra, uh, Laporta, Jameer Gibbs together. Like Gibbs is a dude who didn't get enough touches, but uh, Dan Campbell came out after the game. He's like, we're going to get him more and more acclimated with the, with the offense. And I think that's almost always the case with rookies, right? Outside of like Bijan, who's the number one uh, overall pick for the, for the Falcons top 10. And even him, like he's still splitting carries right now. Yeah. That's always every rookie, bro. They, they, they take six, eight, 10 weeks to really get into, uh, into the system, into the team, into the offense for them to really get like trusted type of work. And and Demont like they had the the video of him getting blown up in the backfield like his pass protection or whatever. He had like six good pass protections yeah, before exactly. that. Like it's you always... would see the one thing like of course he's going to be the pass protector. Who would you take rest of the season straight up between them two? Gibbs and Demont. I, I think I just have the mindset that championship weekend Gibbs is going to be more valuable. I would take Gibbs in the too. championship or in the playoffs not even just the weekend of, but I think the back 5 6 weeks is going to be so much more important than the first 13. Yeah, Gibbs is going to be so – he's going to be so sick. Yeah. At some point during this year, they're going to start feeding him more. They're going to get more screens involved. I don't even really think they gave him – they gave him a few dump-offs, but I almost don't feel like they actually set him up for any screens. He had two targets. Yeah, the next dude I got is uh, another NFC North running back. You want to take a guess? Roshan? It's not, not It's not Roshan. It's not Roshan because I feel like he's – he might be available in waiver wire leagues. Exactly. I also don't know if I feel strongly enough to trade for Roshan Johnson. My dude is uh, Alexander Madison. I, I haven't I, – I wasn't like one of the uh, Madison like fanboys. It wasn't someone that I was going out of my way to be like, oh, he's – you know, he's been so good the last few years without Dalvin Cook. What's going to happen is he had, he had a tough matchup against Tampa Bay, right? So he struggled in week one. They play Philly in week two. <laughs> I'm not trading for him right now, but I'm waiting for – another struggling game from Madison, and then I would try to tra uh, trade for him. Because if I look at the stats, right, he played 75% of the snaps, uh, had 75% of the rushes there, ran around on 53% of their dropback. So he's involved on the ground. He's involved in the passing game. He's on the field for most of the part. And again, I think he's going to struggle versus Philly after Tampa Bay. The next four games after that, Chargers, Carolina, Kansas City, Chicago. Those are four games where running backs should provide the, you know, the fantasy points that you kind of, dig in uh when you when you draft a dude like alexander madison and again not not a fan he's almost a dude that i might try to like double double trade him right like yeah. trade him during that span <laughs> and then get rid of him again but look at it like 86 percent of the short down and distance snaps went to alexander madison the goal line stuff is going to be him anytime they get down there my biggest concern is not really about madison it's more so about the vikings like they they could turn into a bad team really really quickly you know they they got good pieces but overall as a team like I do kind of worry about them being successful moving the moving the ball down the field outside of like really big plays to Justin Jefferson if your entire offense is based on like okay Justin Jefferson better better rip off a thirty yard catch right now otherwise this this um, this drive is gonna is gonna stall probably gonna have some issues but I, I like to think they're gonna figure it out. I agree, and we all know Kirk Cousins and just the Vikings offense. It is pass first, and Kirk Cousins is a gunslinger, but throwing 344 yards a game, that's not sustainable. Like I don't know. Like, I don't know. High 200s, that's yeah. fair. That's even aggressive, but no. I also, I also would say, too, yeah, like obviously that's not sustainable, but Kirk also turned the ball over like nine times in the first quarter. I think they handily win that game if he doesn't just like botch the, <laughs> botch the snaps. I don't know. That, that was a good turnaround for him because that just was so ugly. I mean, they still it, lost. It was such a bad start, but I do think the like, running backs are going to be way more involved when they yeah. don't do dumb shit like that. <laughs> that was rough. Yeah. Uh, I, I like Madison. He, and he did get in the end zone. Like, even in a bad day, in a bad week for Minnesota, like, he was still so, I mean, producing. If, if he's had a bad game again, people are going to be like, oh, God, he's like an RB3 maybe. Like, yeah. we can't really trust him or anything. I think that's when you kind of, like, jump in. And then maybe you flip for, like, a Jacoby Myers if he has another big game or something like that. I don't know if people are really going to do that, but – some sort of like low end wide receiver three a guy who has like a big game. That that's when I would try to do the flip. I could definitely see him flopping Thursday, and that'd be the perfect time. Mm -hmm. But I think I want to. We're supposed to yell at each other. Yeah, I think I want to sell Austin Eckler. Him and Josh Kelly each had 16 carries. Austin Eckler having a run game is a good thing, but a over 117 yards is not sustainable for him. Like he broke off that one play, and I, I just don't think that's a sustainable expectation for him. And he got after two and a half years, you just don't think he's going to keep getting it done. I, I th it's not even I'm doubting him. I'm actually, I, I mean, I faded him before the season, but I, 
I like have faith in Josh Kelly now. Like I think they'll split the goal line carries, and Eckler's still going to get his passing work. But I, I just think you could sell him for whatever you want at this point. Would you take Jamar Chase over Eckler rest of season? You wouldn't. I know you wouldn't. I think I would. I mean, really? I don't think. Th- I think the Bengals are going to be fine. Yeah, I do too. I just I don't know. It, every every summer it's like I you, you kind of talk yourself out of Eckler, and then he has an Eckler game, and then you're like, fuck, he just does this every week. <laughs> That's what I was. I just he didn't do anything crazy like. His receiving game, four catches, 47 yards. That's probably about what he does, I'd say. I, I just think the 117 yards, and we just see the final stat score. If you, oh, we put up 24 points. That's what Eckler always does. I he does. See, I want to see a game where he does what he usually has, where he only has 55 yards in the game, and that's where he maintains rather than this 100. Is that what he long. normally does? I feel like he normally is like between 50, 80 and 100. 60. No way. 80 and 100. Does, isn't he like 1,700 yards from scrimmage each year? He's never had a thousand yard rushing season. Yeah, but rushing doesn't matter if, if he gets it receiving yardage. Okay, okay, sorry. If you're saying seventy yardy, seventy to eighty scrimmage yards, yes. But I'm talking yeah. about just on the ground is where he what had does 117. That matter, though? What does that matter? Which way he's getting it? Last year it was sixteen hundred fifty yards. The year before no, that, I'm yeah, saying, that's a hundred yards from scrimmage. I, I just, a game. I think his rushing game is gonna regress heavily. I split carries with Kelly. Yeah, I, I think I think he'll still end up with like at this was with worst Herbert. case scenario seven hundred fifty rushing yards probably. Yeah, exactly. Right, and he had nine hundred. That's that's I don't think that's a lot of. Uh, but I also don't think he'll put up eighteen or twenty touchdowns again. Like Herbert had one passing touchdown, right? Two maybe. Uh, he threw one to Keenan, I think. I didn't know. remember they called it back though. Oh, maybe they threw one to Dan- uh, Donald Parham. Yeah, he had one passing touchdown. Like that's gonna go up, and I think Eckler's touchdowns are gonna go down. I Look, I, I think it kind of feels like Eckler's just due for a touchdown every game. I think Eckler will have a good season. I'm not saying that. I think he will still put up 18, 17, 19 points a game. But if you could sell him with the expectation that he's gonna put up 24, 25, that's that's worth it in my opinion. Okay, so you take Jamar Chase over Eckler right now. Rest yeah. of season. Because I think Eckler will have maybe from his 2018 mark, I think he's going to drop to like 13 12 this year. And I think Jamar can still put up 12 13 as well. Wait, 13 12 what? Touchdowns. Oh, touchdowns. Mm. I think Jamar Chase could also have that amount on top of 1,500 yards still. I think Eckler's, it, it kind of feels like Eckler's floor is 1,500 yards from scrimmage. That would be a bad Dang. year for him. I mean, he's he's like 1,700, 1,600 yards every year pretty much. Where Chase, I'm like, Chase kind of kind of got pop off if he wants to hit 1,500. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like. Like, he had such a good game. We're just thinking it's going to happen again and again. I, because I, that's literally what no, he does every he game. Is coming. The cliff is here. Uh, I, I'm pulling my Max Kellerman, Tom Brady. Eckler will fall off a cliff. This year? Yes. <laughs> Not next week versus the Titans, though. Give it Give it like mid- Titans have a good rush defense. They have a very good rush D. Yeah, Jamal Williams did not look great against them. No, the Titans have a great rush D. But it doesn't matter because it's no, Austin Eckler. Uh, halfway through the season, we're going to be like, this is it's just not the high point of which we wanted. Okay. Like, I would take CMC, Saquon, Chubb. Who am I missing? Bijan. Bijan. Yeah, probably Bijan all over him. Interesting. But I said this, like, going into the season. Like, yeah, but then when you see him throw up a 25 up. spot, like, then you're I, like, I don't Damn. care. He's putting up 25. He's 28. He put up 25 points in a game where he split most of the work with Josh Kelly. That's the, that's <laughs> the problem. <laughs> put up 25 points in a game where they had to score 34. They're hoping Get to it how have you to live do it. that. No. Eckler. Eckler. <laughs> of, pay the man. No, the meme pay will come back man. to where it's due. All right. Age see. says otherwise. Mm-hmm. I'm going strictly off of due logic for Eckler. Sell him. Um, similar to Elijah Moore, uh, Jahan Dotson was a dude that I loved all summer long. And I know the yardage and necessarily like production wasn't there, but there will be better days in that passing, uh, offense for Washington. He had a 25% target share. He had a 33% air yard share. So, you know, when push comes to shove, Terry's going to get healthy, but it's going to be those two running hundred percent of the routes. I, I just believe in the dude. I, I believe that they're going to have to no more Curtis Samuel, 60 yard days. Curtis Samuel set basically a career high. Wasn't good enough for, for me to not be a fucking NPC. I got to do that tomorrow. We'll do it. You'll, <laughs> yeah, do, was, you'll do it. I didn't want to bring it up, but I'm like, you're I have to do it. I just have no time right now. Um, no, I, I just believe in, in Dotson. He was a guy, again, similar to Elijah Moore, where it's like liked him, led the team in, in receiving yards in week one. It just wasn't a very high number, but the usage in terms of like relative to everybody else on the team, he's looking like he's the one for as long as Terry is kind of banged up. And I still think Dotson could be a, a, a playmaker to a high degree without um, with or without Terry McLaurin being healthy. And this was another game where like Brian Robinson had 20 carries basically like they're not gonna be in a lot of situations where they're dominating the other team where they're playing the Arizona Cardinals where it might be like oh they won't get as good of an easy matchup anywhere else yeah but they'll also have a lot of teams that they play against that are scoring against them so they'll actually have to throw the ball more which I think is where Dotson and 
Terry McLaurin start to kind of like pop off a little bit. So I'm, I'm definitely in on Jahan Dotson. I like Dotson and, you know, Gut's going to be happy watching this. But does it, like, I know game script wise, they'll see better game scripts to throw the ball, like you said. But does it concern you they struggled so much to move the ball versus Arizona? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Sam Howell made me, it, it was kind of one of those things where like preseason got us really excited for it. For every young, for Kenny Pickett, the only one Sam that Howell, is Jordan Love. Jordan Love. Eh? Purdy looked great too. Yeah, I, fair, I like both fair, those fair. guys, but yeah, it, it was split. It was half and half, and then Sam Howell um, struggled mightily. But listen, it's, it's going to happen in the regular season. I also think with teams like the Arizona Cardinals and just teams in general, where people don't know the players, like that's when players break out. Where it's like, oh, they don't have anyone good anywhere. It's like, okay, well, that's when opportunity happens, and you have guys that you don't know yet because they haven't proven themselves. So who knows? We might look back in Arizona in like eight weeks and be like, oh, they have like three or four like really good players on the defensive side of the ball. So. Maybe that's true. Maybe Sam Howell just absolutely fucking stinks. So, yeah, that could be a problem. But I, I still like Dotson. Maybe the coach in Arizona is just that good. Yeah. What's his name again? Uh, Jonathan Gannon. Jonathan Gannon. Defensive coordinator. Former defensive coordinator for the Eagles. Kind of kind of similar to that, you know, second-year QB we didn't love. I kind of like George Pickens, especially with the Deontay Johnson injury. <clears throat> Pickens had seven <clears throat> targets. You don't think Allen Robinson's the GOAT? See, that's Allen Robinson. Calvin. Uh, Calvin Austin. Like, Calvin Austin. It's George Pickens now. I, I don't. And it could I, be for three weeks. But I don't know if he's capable of being the one. It's not even like I'm ex- pre- expecting all those receptions. I think, I think Austin PPR. Eckler would beat the shit out of George Pickens. <laughs> just one on one in a fight. No way. Yeah. Eckler's like. Actually, that. no, Pickens actually, actually like kind of muscle mass. No, nah, Pickens is a beast. Just not a good player. I want to see Pickens versus like Kadarius Tony. In a fight? They're both thin and just. No, nah, Tony, Tony and Eckler would be fire. You know how like shifty they'd be? No one would be able to land a punch. Dude, Eckler's like hella strong, actually, though. Eckler's hella strong. Tony's elusive as shit. Yeah. It's like a boxer versus a, versus a UFC person. No, but I'm serious. I don't think Pittsburgh like could have been worse. And he still had seven targets, five receptions, 35 yards. Like, it was a bad day. Like, if you started him and you're looking at your six points, you're looking at me right now like, dude, how are you trying to build confidence in me? But it's more of a, like, I don't think it could get worse situation. Like, we're at the freaking floor. Okay. Would you, if I'm looking at, um, let me think about, like, running backs that were drafted in that same spot. Pickens was, like, early six, maybe late six round pick. I think by the time people were we're drafting. What other running backs were in that area? It's oh man, it, there's like, so many busts. You're talking, uh, like Cam Haker. That's that was the first guy that came to my <laughs> mind. That I'm like, of course you're not going to take him over. Pin. I don't know, dude. Pickens. I just feel like he can't separate for shit. He might get forced a lot of balls. I, I agree, but we always compare him to Mike Williams and, and Mike Williams at like he, 20 yards. He could be the touchdown guy for yeah. Pittsburgh. It, it's not like a go out there and chase George Pickens, but if you think you're in the situation where you can land him, I, I do think there's value to be had. Yeah, I guess my only problem too is like Deontay Johnson will be back. Yeah, that might not be for like another like four or five weeks. I don't really know, but once he's back, I kind of just think he's he's the guy again. No, yeah, hurt. I'm not. Like, telling you to get him for your fantasy football championship, but almost like an Alexander Madison flips thing. And I don't even think it's a bad idea to hold on to Would him. you take Pickens or Madison rest of season? Uh, I'd probably still lean Madison. I just think long-term. Talk on it. Speak on it. Alexander Say Madison. Say with your chest, dog. He's going to get more. As much as I just, like, that's a bad look. I think George Pickens could be the touchdown guy. Madison's the touchdown score for that backfield. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a bunch of names, and you just tell uh, me half PPR, rather? who would you rather, yeah. George Pickens, James Cook. George Pickens. Interesting. Brian Robinson or George Pickens? Brian Robinson. Either of the Tampa Bay wide receivers, Evans or Godwin, would you take? I'd prefer both. Over, over Pickens. Pickens. Damian Pierce or George Pickens? I feel like my bias is hitting. Like, I th- I think. Pierce is a guy I don't want to overreact on yet. Pierce, I've liked all offseason, and I've reached on him in, like, fifth round, so I'm not going to just back out on him now. DJ Moore or George Pickens? It's DJ Moore, but, like, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, it's so close when we were taking DJ Moore in the fourth round. Tyree Kill or George Pickens? <laughs> But you get us like DJ Moore was a fourth round pick and Pickens was eight. Yeah. And like and now I'm like the gap is there. Yeah. It, I mean it's not like but George didn't close the gap. It was more like DJ Moore. No, it, but it that's is, yeah. what happens. Like that's just given the situation they're in. God, I wish Underdog released new drafts like full drafts every week. Like I really wish oh, they did yeah. one week drafts. Sometimes so. they do a mid season though, right? They've done it before, but like did it for like two days one time. It was weird. I don't know. I don't know what they're waiting for, but I would fucking love to do them now. It'd be sick to see the ADP again. I don't think I have anything like useful left. Like I'm still for sure buying the Eagles passing game. Devonta Smith, Dallas what do you Goddard. Think about buying Christian Kirk. I had him on my list too. I that that's <laughs> another one. I don't really want to. I get it. Like Zay Jones has had more snaps than Christian Kirk. Yeah. Um. It's like dude's coming off 1100 yard season. Right. And He's still a really good player. Dollars. They gave him a lot of money. And he's attached to Trevor Lawrence. So, yeah. like, 
Kirk's going to have his days. This just happened to be the day where Calvin Ridley reintroduced himself again. So it's a clearly Ridley's the one there. There's no chance of Kirk being the one there. Um, but Kirk, Kirk's a dude that I would definitely buy low if I if I could you know pull the trigger on it. But again, I'm not like trying to. Would you go Pickens or Christian Kirk rest of the season? That's actually I think a good one. That's very good. I think I would take Kirk. I believe in Trevor. Yeah. Yeah. I would rather attach myself to Trevor Lawrence if it's two guys that I'm not really sure what the rest of the season outlook looks like. But, like, this is, like, going back to, like, the... Like, if you could have, like... If you could trade away, like, A.J. Brown for Waddle and Christian Kirk, like, someone might take that at this point. Like, Christian Kirk could legitimately be seen as a throw-in in in trades. That's that's, fair. I actually think that that, that could be a realistic trade. Yeah. That's something I would sign up for all day. Yeah, I would. Yeah, Waddle's gonna have monster fucking game soon. A couple of those go his way. Thing with Waddle's like every every catch him and Tyreek have, they're all like twenty six yards. Exactly. Like it's gonna go more Tyreek's way, but Waddle's still gonna have his days 40 percent of the time. Oh, Tyreek's so good, dude. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Just sell Waddle, AJ Brownie, and Kirk for Tyreek Hill. Sell everything you <laughs> own for everyone on Miami. You think? Call it now. And our first uh, buy or sell video, just Tyreek over two K. Yes. Really? Breaks yeah. the record? Yeah. He'll go. I mean, like, obviously, I don't know what the injury. I think injury, even if he plays, yeah. if he misses one game, if he gets 16 full games, I still think he does it. Really? Yeah. I'm it's. it's excited. I don't think defenses can cover Miami. <laughs> he's literally doing full. He's running a 40-yard dash behind the line of scrimmage <laughs> before the play starts. If you're a cornerback, what are you going to do? That one in the red zone where he just, that was so frustrating to watch. It's just incredible, dude. I, ca- I kind of had Keenan on my buy list, too. I feel like I have every good wide receiver that just had a bad day. What did Keenan end up with? He had nine targets, six or 76. Okay. And he's never been a no touch. He's never been a touchdown ma- machine, but he didn't get in the end zone when he should have. Like, six or 76, you look at that, and you got a 10-point day. Some people be like, bro. I kind of like, I feel like even, it's what I expect from Keenan, like seven for 70 every week. And you're just hoping for the touchdown every other. Yeah. If Fair. Even if that. Like he scored six touchdowns for eight straight weeks. Yeah, every three. Eight straight years. Yeah. Did any tight ends? I just had got. I had Goddard. I still love Goddard. He had oh, zero. Yeah. He had literally zero <laughs> points. I mean, every tight. There wasn't a good tight end. It was such an awful week, dude. It was that was something I tweeted out before. It was six touchdowns from tight ends. They were the tight end one, two, three, four, five, and nine. I don't know. I feel like week one is just so stupid to do like trade targets. Actually, just because I, you just sound Cut so this. dumb. It's like, of course, like everyone, anyone who had a bad week one, that buy them. Everyone's panicking. No one's fucking panicking. We're four days into football. You know, like no one actually cares. Well, I, I do think when it's like actual Goddard. donuts, like, I would send Pickens for Goddard right now. I would give Pickens I mean, it for depends Goddard. Depends on the tight end. Yeah. No, I don't know. End of story. Just straight up. I would Goddard's gonna Goddard's gonna eat him and Tyree Killer are gonna end up with the same amount of yards. I don't have much Rodgers. Would you, I, would you straight up try and just this actual like panic sell Wilson? Like, because everyone knows if you try and sell him, you're not going to get good value. So it's oh, like, I, I feel like you have to just hold. I don't even know what his value is right now. Yeah, I mean, like, he's so good that I kind of just feel like he's still going to get like 10 targets catch? a game. Yeah, of course. He, like, just blocked it and then scooped it in. Unbelievable. <laughs> like, and there's like, people out here being like, JSN is more athletic than Garrett Wilson, like, fam. How fucking stupid are you guys? Great. Makes me so angry when people that. when people kept saying that all off season. Like they said Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave both said Jason's the most athletic one. Like fucking turn your brain on one time. I, I don't know. I, I would hold Garrett Wilson. Yeah, I'd be fine. I don't with think him. you have a choice. I don't even know what what would you be able to flip him for? Waddle for Wilson. I would take Waddle. Yeah. All right. Uh. Well, those are fucking the worst <laughs> trade targets in the NFL right now. No one's George Pickens. No one is selling anyone low. No one's buying anyone high. It's just, it's just not how it works. But give us two weeks. Yeah, give us, yeah. Let us, let us cook a little bit. We'll see you uh, next one. Second. <laughs>